Introducing the all-new iPad Pro. So you want to edit using Final Cut Pro for iPad. The new iPad Pro M4 is out, and you're probably really excited right now. And so was I. But coming from a first-time iPad owner, that's right, this is my first ever iPad. There's some big limitations, and I mean some big limitations. So before you head out to the store excited like I was, I want to save you some time and make sure that you fully understand what you're getting into. Because Final Cut Pro for iPad, well, there's a lot of things that it can't do. And I don't think anyone has actually made a video on this. Are you ready? Let's go. So as exciting as the iPad is and the M4 chip, there's some big limitations in Final Cut Pro. So this video is gonna be about all the things you can't do in Final Cut Pro as a video editor versus Mac. There's no doubt that the new iPad Pro is absolutely stunning with the innovative tandem OLED screen, but there's a problem because Final Cut Pro for iPad is not backwards compatible with your Mac. Let me show you guys what I mean. You can work off of the iPad Pro no problem, but you can't open up Mac files on your iPad Pro. You can, however, open up iPad files off your Mac, but there's a caveat and I'll get to that a little bit later. The screen is absolutely beautiful and really bright. I mean, really bright. But one of the features that's lacking that I think is a must is, well, the color wheels. On Mac, I use them all the time, but on the iPad, they're not there. I'm sure this can be resolved in a simple update. Come on, Apple. So let's talk about color grading because color grading on the iPad, it's kind of like pulling teeth. I mean, having color wheels would just make it so much more simpler. You have to keep scrolling down to find exactly what you want. And remember when I said you can open up files on your Mac? Well, if you start it on the iPad and you open up files on your Mac, color grading gets kind of tricky because when you try to adjust simple things like exposure, things go south real quick. Here's a perfect example. I started this project on my iPad and then I wanted to finish it on my Mac. It's really buggy, and honestly, I was shocked to find this out in real time. There's also this like really weird way of applying effects, or everything I guess gets applied as an effect, because when I open this on my Mac, all the color grading that I did is applied as an effect even when you open it on the Mac. So it just like, in general, just uses everything as this like catch-all effect tool which is really annoying because I'm noticing that when I'm trying to fix things on my Mac, when I'm trying to finish the project and just do some simple exposure grading or exposure correction, like bringing down the shadows or the highlights or whatever, taking up the mids, it's not doing it. Whatever the Final Cut Pro for iPad did, the Mac version is recognizing it as like total exposure, no matter what you select. Shadows, highlights, mids, it doesn't matter. The whole thing gets moved as one unit. Extremely frustrating, frustrating. So yeah, that's right. Color grading is entirely jacked up. But it's not just color grading, because audio takes a huge hit on Final Cut Pro for iPad. Simple things like syncing audio is just simply not there and it forces you to use multicam. So there goes syncing up your audio. Honestly, the only way you can do it is by using multicam. You can't even compound the clip into one compound clip. I loved shooting my talking heads and then compounding it with an external recorder and a great microphone and calling it the talking head. Honestly, it seems like multicam is designed for People that are just using iPhones to shoot their videos and not people that are using cinema cameras or even mirrorless cameras alongside with external audio recorders and professional microphones. After playing with Final Cut Pro for iPad a little bit more, I was able to figure out ways to sync up audio using multicam. But again, you're forced to use multicam. 
So it's really counterintuitive because I don't need to cut between takes or different angles or go through different audios. I have my set audio and I just want to use it. Also, when you bring in that multi-cam clip into Final Cut Pro for MacBook, it's extremely buggy. And whatever's going on in the background, it seems to be bogging down my MacBook Pro. There's another really weird thing. You can't use any of your audio presets. I have all kinds of audio presets that I want to use. Now, another really weird thing is markers and chapters, because I can't figure out a way to do it on Final Cut Pro for iPad. If you guys know how to do it, please leave me a comment below, because I use chapters all the time for my audience, so they can just skip to the part that's most interesting to them. Okay, now I did promise I was gonna talk about some good things, so here they are. The first one is voice isolation. I use this quite a bit, and given that everything else was a little buggy, I was really happy to see that not only do you still have voice isolation, but you also have dual mono. See, I use a lot of wireless lavalier mics, like the Rode Wireless Go 2 or the DJI mic and so forth, and having the ability to use that and maintain dual mono is a big deal because I always record with the safety track. Another big highlight is exports. It's actually quite shocking to see just how many options you have for exporting files, which is a really good thing. So the hype got to me and I was really excited to pick up an iPad and I envisioned myself sitting on the couch and finishing my edits. But with everything I showed you guys today, Final Cut Pro for iPad just falls short. So ultimately, this is extremely disappointing and it almost triples my work because there's not so much that you can do in Final Cut Pro for iPad. And then when you try to finish it in Mac on a laptop, it just triples your work. I don't understand who this is for. It's not for professionals. It's for creators that are trying to make honestly quick videos, vertical videos, YouTube shorts, so right now, it's just completely frustrating to use and pointless. They have a lot of work to do here.